Now let's move into a discussion on iron fertilizers and how we might be able to overcome iron deficiencies using iron fertilizers. So in terms of iron fertilizers, we often utilize metal sulfates or something else, all right? And so we'll talk first about metal sulfates. So we might use um, ferrous sulfate. It's a metal salt. The salt, it's, it's, it's an iron salt, iron sulfate. It has 19% iron in it. The 19% number is not magic. 19%, and we've talked about this before in previous units, 19% is based on the molecular weight of iron as compared to the molecular weight of iron sulfate with seven waters. When we apply this material to soils, especially with soils that have a high pH, the iron precipitates quickly as iron hydroxide, iron OH3. And this occurs at high pH soils or in high pH soil. So I could tell you that this is not a good soil applied fertilizer with soils that are probably above about pH seven, simply because the iron source is converted rather quickly to a source that is not available to plants. That source is iron hydroxide. You can apply it by banding, but still it doesn't last very long in soils. If you if you get half a season out of band applying uh, iron sulfide, you might be lucky. So what do we do? What do we do is we actually can foliar apply iron metals or iron salts, iron sulfate. All right. So this works pretty well for turf and ornamentals. You likely wouldn't do this on large scale production ag settings like corn, soybean, wheat, um, et cetera. And the recommendation is probably close to 2% in 2% uh, of um, ferrous sulfate in 20 to 30 gallons of water per acre. And the kicker is, is this, is that you apply it, the iron's actually taken up through the stomachs and the plant continues to grow. And guess what? It still perceives an iron deficiency from the soil. So you have to reapply and then you have to re-reapply and you might have to re-re-reapply. So it is not a permanent fix, FYI. Ferrous sulfate, sulfate can actually be certified organic if it's simply mined and crushed finely. The recommendations, I can't find any recommendations for soils in Ohio, but the recommendations in general across the US follow this approach. For agronomic crops, if the soil test concentrations of iron are zero to three, they may be considered low, and you might need some corrective act, um, action via foliar application. If they're between roughly three and five, it's marginal. The corrective application for um, foliar application may be beneficial, and if it's greater than five parts per million iron, you really don't need any corrective application of uh, iron fertilizer. You can see the other application rates for turf if you're interested. We can also use chelates, and we can try utilizing chelates uh, in terms of application to either soils and or plants themselves. There are commercial chelate varieties or compounds that contain micronutrients, including iron. I can tell you they're very expensive. They're oftentimes only used on high value crops, unlike corn or wheat. And you can foliar or soil apply these. The, the nice thing about these is they're always in liquid form, uh, almost always in liquid form, and they can be mixed with fluid fertilizers and be band applied with seed if necessary. There are a solid handful of commercial iron chelates on the market, and they all act and interact differently when applied to either soil or plants. And so here are three that are pretty common. There's iron EDDHA, iron DTPA, and iron EDTA. The iron part's simple. The remainder is the acronym for the chelate, 
all right? And they all have different chemical compounds or compositions. Iron EDDHA contains 6% iron, DTPA contains 10%, and EDTA contains somewhere between 5 and 14%. And they act differently in terms of effectiveness. In fact, the most effective and the the if you ever have to use these, the most effective one that you'll probably see and purchase on the market is iron EDDHA. And we'll talk about this in this video. The fact that this chemical EDDHA is effective over a wide range of pH values in soils, unlike EDTA or DTPA. There are organic chelates that you can purchase like iron citrate or iron tartrate. Just FYI. So when you look at the chelates, these are organic compounds. You can see there's carbon present in them. And they're, they're, they're rather complex. And the names are really long. All right. So this is why if you were ever to purchase one of these on the market, that it's easier for us to use the abbreviations instead of saying the whole name, like DTPA, for example. Um, and that should say DTPA, not DPTA. That's a mistake on my part. And the actual name is diethylene triamine pentaacetic acid. Now, who wants to go into Home Depot or Lowe's or a garden center and say, do you have any iron diethylene triamine pentaacetic acid? No one. So you would go in and say iron DTPA. And in fact, you would be buying more often than not that I've seen on the market iron EDDHA. And I'm not even going to attempt to state the name. The chelates are complex and they're complex. They can complex iron. They hold on to iron and help deliver iron to plants to cover, overcome issues like you see in this picture here with strawberry. And when we look at these compounds, and I've mentioned this in this video already, that they are effective over varying pH ranges. So here's pH on the x-axis and the ratio of chelated iron to total chelate on the y-axis. And you'll note that EDTA is not that effective after about a pH of six. The amount of iron that's chelated on the compound decreases rapidly. For DTPA, it's above about seven. And EDDHA, it contains or maintains its iron complex over basically the entire range of pH values that we deal with in production agricultural settings, which makes this attractive and makes it probably the most used on the market today. If you were to look at the guarantee in ED, this is EDDHA, right? The guaranteed analysis is 6% iron. And this is EDDHA. I can tell by this long word. And if you went back a few slides, you could probably see most of that word present in the, the previous slide. And specifically with respect to Ohio, as far as I can tell, there are no suspected iron deficiency symptoms in our soils in the state of Ohio. I can't find any information on the web. If somebody in this class knows or has or has seen an iron deficiency in crops raised in Ohio, please let me know. I can tell you I've seen it only one time in a maple tree on the street that I live on near Columbus, Ohio. But other than that, to find an iron deficiency in a crop that we raise is something that I'd like to be made aware of if you know. But right now I have not seen it. 